Welcome to Chapter 1, Lesson 1 of the God Cares for You Bible Study. I'm Chaplain Bill Goodrich with God Cares Ministry, and I am excited to be able to share with you principles from God's Word that will help us walk closer to Jesus, our Lord. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Jesus promised us that when two or three gather together in his name, he would be with us. So let's welcome him in this time of prayer. Let's open our hearts to him. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love and your grace that you have poured out to everyone who looks to you. We thank you for Jesus. And Lord Jesus, you promised that you would be with us as we gather in your name. And so we welcome you we ask that you would speak to us. We open our hearts and our minds to what you will say and what you want us to learn. Please, Jesus, speak to us and lead our lives on the narrow path where you are, through the narrow gate of your kingdom, where we might flourish in your love, your truth, and your good plans for us. And Lord Jesus, we ask this all in your holy name. Amen. Well, today we're going to begin with lesson one in the God Cares for You Bible study. And you hopefully have your scripture page, which has the verses on it that we're going to be studying today, along with a prayer. This is really good because it gives you an opportunity to take this paper home and meditate and think about the words that were shared from the Bible and to also pray these prayers that will be on the various handouts that you get throughout the study of this curriculum. So today our focus is on change. It's called a changing world. And we experience change in our world, don't we? Lots of them. From the time we were young till presently, there's always change. And because change is inevitable. And I wonder if we can just think of some of the interesting things that we have seen change in our lifetime. Change like transportation. How many of us can remember back the different kinds of cars and, and uh, vehicles that we were in in, in our younger years. Uh, the uh, difference between the cars in the 40s and the 50s versus the cars today are just phenomenal. Uh, I think of intermittent windshield wipers, which are a blessing, and cruise control, and power steering, and power brakes, and uh, heat where you can adjust uh, uh, to almost the exact temperature that you want in the vehicle. These are all changes that actually are pretty good. What are some of the other changes though? How about, how about appliance? How many of you grew up with a ringer washer? I actually did not grow up with one, but I do remember seeing one in our basement. But those have changed quite a bit. Dishwashers and garbage disposals and various things that we have today that we did not have when we were younger. Uh, sometimes I think about even our bathrooms. Uh, not too many of us had to live with an outhouse, but we all remember seeing them uh, in our lifetime. And that certainly has changed a lot in our world. What about other changes that you can think of? Anything that comes to mind when you think of change? How about places where you maybe used to go and walk and enjoy the, the view and now there's been a huge change because there's a strip mall or a housing development there or a highway. Some of us have seen that kind of change. Some of the places where we grew up are not the same at all. What are some of the more personal changes you have seen in your lifetime? Changes in family or friends or health? Uh, you know, our friends change, don't they? They move on. 
Some move to other areas of the country and we think, oh, we'll stay in touch and we lose touch with them. And that change sometimes is a, a challenging loss in our hearts and uh, children grow up and one good change is they have babies and we have grandchildren and we can enjoy that a lot. Some of our children have had to move out of state and we don't get to see them or our grandchildren as much as we used to or would like and that change is not always easy for us. And our health, anyone who is over 60 years old knows about health changing. Change in residency is something that we've all experienced, moving from one place to another. And sometimes this is good. Sometimes the changes we experience in our life are very beneficial. But there are often times where it's uncomfortable or disorienting. And when we go through these times of change, how do we adapt? How do we adjust for the change that's before us? The one thing that we have to realize that change will never stop. It's inevitable. Throughout our life, we invest so much of our time and resources to develop a comfortable and secure environment. Our home, our family, our relationships with people, our treasured possessions, all these things help to establish a comfortable and secure environment that we desire. And how wonderful it is when life affords us a time to enjoy these pleasures and, and to find security in our familiar surroundings. You know, a very wise and wealthy king once wrote about change. His name was Solomon. And he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And then he goes through a list of things that change. And he says, there's a time for every activity and a time for every deed. And so the things that we can see with our eyes definitely are temporary. And we must realize that change is something that we have to learn to live with. All our earthly treasures, even our bodies, are temporary. They exist for only a season and a time. And we can see that what this King Solomon wrote is so true, that there is a time and a season for everything. And since we can't stop change, and since change can sometimes be uncomfortable or difficult, we must learn to turn to the Lord in the midst of that change so that he can give us the strength to move forward and to flourish even in the midst of change. And what I would like to do before we continue on is to sing a few hymns. The first hymn that you're very familiar with, I'm sure, it's called Amazing Grace. So let's sing that song, Amazing Grace.
I love that song. One of my favorite parts of that song is, it says, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. It could say, through many changes, I have come. And yes, by God's grace, we will press on. In his love and his grace, we will press on. Let's sing another song. The solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood's support be in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Yes, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. What a great song for us to be reminded of this topic of change. You know, God understands how change can be difficult, and He has given us promises to help us journey through the challenges that change brings in our lives. I'd like for you to look at your paper, verse number one on the scripture sheet. This is such an important verse for us to hear and understand what God wants us to know in the midst of change. He says here, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. This verse really helps me remember that no matter what is changing in my life, it says, though the mountains be shaken. For me, the mountains are the big issues of my life. Relationships, my identity, my comfort, where I, where I will be living, things that are really huge and big in my life. And the, the hills that it mentions are the smaller things, things that are not such a great deal, but they matter a lot to me. And it says here, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, this will happen because, as we said earlier, change is inevitable. But it says, yet my unfailing love God's unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor his covenant of peace ever, ever, ever be removed. What he has set in motion for us to be able to live a life of peace will never change. That still remains. I love that. You might remember the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. One of the verses in that song says, Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. He is faithful 
and he remains faithful through all the changes, the storms, the droughts, the, the, the challenges that we face. Life, nature, and other things will change, but God's unfailing love and covenant of peace remains because God does not change. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now that is a verse that we can hold on to. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Have you ever had a time in your life where you experienced a change that was unwelcomed? It was difficult and you didn't want it to happen. But as things change, you were forced to make this adjustment. And in time, that change turned out to be a real blessing. You know, I have a story that I want to share with you about a friend of mine. His name was Ken. Ken was in his mid-60s when he had a stroke and was placed in a nursing home. He was so distraught over all the losses that he told the chaplain that he was looking for a way to end his life. But after attending a Bible study for a few months, Ken began to see his life from a different perspective, a new perspective. He surrendered his life to God's will and he began to change within. Ken became a ray of light and hope to many residents in that home. His changed circumstances resulted in him giving and receiving love and appreciating people like never before. Ken later shared with me, moving into this place is one of the best things that ever happened to me because this is where I found God. What an amazing change that took place in his life that was so unwelcomed, but he lived the rest of his life as a blessing to others. And as a result, the other people that he blessed became a blessing to him. So remember this, friends, that change is not a sign or an indicator that God is not thinking of you or is disinterested in you, or it's not a sign that God is angry with you. Change is just a part of life, and God wants to be with us through that change. The Lord always has good in store for the one who puts their hope in Him. I have another Bible verse I'd like to share with you on your paper. It's number two from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It was written by the Apostle Paul, the great apostle who was used by God to develop many, many churches. We today, 2,000 years later, are still benefiting from the work that Paul did. And you would think that this man would have the best life. You know, that everything would go well for him because he was serving God. But even a man who was serving God experienced the challenges that change brings. He experienced loss that, that is uh, beyond measure, really. And in this verse, I think it's very helpful for us. It says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. You see, what he's saying is that what we're experiencing now doesn't even compare to the good that we're going to experience in the future. He continues on, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You know, when we experience the challenges that change brings and the losses, we sometimes begin to ask questions like, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? How did I end up in this situation? And these may be good questions to be asking ourselves and to be praying about. 
But we must understand and always remember that change is not a sign that God is angry with us or disinterested in us. It is not a sign that God is not near. Is it possible that the changes are the very things that will bring about the best things in our lives? This was true for Ken and everybody who is in heaven right now are experiencing the good of what those changes did in this difficult lifetime. You see, they, it says, they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Look at verse number three on your paper. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You see, in the midst of change, if we look at the difficult things and only ruminate on those kind of things, those things grab our hearts and take us down a road that is so difficult and so challenging, even disorienting. But if we put our eyes on Jesus and allow him to shine his light on our path, then we will experience the blessings that he intends in the midst of our challenges. Look at verse number four. This is so important. Verse four comes from Hebrews. It says, Jesus promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Friends, that is a promise. It is something that God himself has given us. And if we have God's promise, we know that he is faithful. You see, God uses our afflictions. He uses our losses, the unpleasant changes in our lives, and the trials we are facing to bring us closer to him. That is his ultimate goal and desire, is that we would walk with him, closer to him. He wants us to spend eternity with him. And since the Lord wills us to find him in the midst of these changes and these trials, and he wills these changes to become something good for us, then what should our attitude be? What should our response be in the midst of the difficulty? Again, I'm not saying there's no difficulty in him. I'm saying in that difficulty, what should our attitude, our mind be focused on? Well, we look to Jesus and we hear what he prayed in the most difficult time in his life as he faced the cross, the very thing that brought us life and hope and salvation. He said this in his prayer, not my will, but your will be done. That was his prayer to his heavenly father, our heavenly father. He taught us something else too in the great prayer, the our father prayer, the Lord's Prayer, as we call it. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Friends, when God's kingdom is reigning in our lives, then change becomes an opportunity to grow closer to the Lord Jesus. And what greater thing can we have? In fact, that's how we started this little video, right? With the song, I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to thee. The Lord Jesus wants us to have confidence that he will never leave us or forsake us in the midst of change. The promise in verse number five is so important for us. Let's look at this together. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. You see, friends, if our eyes are fixed on Jesus, if he is my focus, my life is planted on the rock. If I hear his word and I take hold of it, embrace what he said and ask him for the grace 
to do what he said, to follow his commands, to embrace his directives, then my life is planted on the rock. And when the rains come, he doesn't say if the rains come, he says when they came, when the streams rose, when the trials and challenges come, our life will be planted on the rock and we will know that these troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we will hold on to him and go forward in Jesus' name. There is a prayer on the bottom of your scripture sheet and I want to read this for you. And if you think this is a good prayer, we can all pray this together. Let me read it for you first. It says, Our Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus to help us through the seasons of change and uncertainty. Lord Jesus, I trust you. You are the solid rock on which I stand. May thy kingdom come and thy will be done in my life. Is that a good prayer? Would you like to pray that as a believer in Jesus with me? Let's pray this together out loud, okay? Our Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus to help us through the seasons of change and uncertainty. Lord Jesus, I trust you. You are the solid rock on which I stand. May thy kingdom come and thy will be done in my life. Amen. Amen. As we come to a conclusion on this video, I want you to think about some things that have happened in your life, the changes that are taking place. And if you haven't done this already, Invite Jesus to lead you through them. Invite him and look around. The people around you are going through changes too. And some of them have not learned to take Jesus' hand in the midst of it. Perhaps you can help them by sharing something you learned today. Well, I wish you well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, go in peace. And remember, God is love and God cares for you.